Hi everyone, Keely here from Soy and Shea and we're back again today to make another bar of soap. So today I am working with Aroma's Japanese Cherry Blossom and I'm hoping to make a white soap with a pink drop swirl and then also to do some piping onto the top. So let's go get started. So in this bucket I have my oils which consist of olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter and castor oil and I've got them down to a temperature of about 24 degrees Celsius and in here I've got my lye water. I'm going to add my lye water into my oils um, blend it together to either emulsion or very light trace and then separate the batter off and make our colours. Okay, so I've got it to a very light trace here and I'm now going to add my colours. To the big bucket I'm going to add some um, oil dispersible titanium dioxide. I then also have some raspberry rush mica from Bath Bomb World and I have some cherry blossom mica from my micro obsession and I've actually pre-mixed these in with a little bit of oil just to help them disperse easier through my batter. So we'll pop those in and then we'll give them a blend and then we'll add the fragrance. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good at the moment. What I'm going to do is actually portion off a little bit of this white because I do want to try and keep a white top on this soap. So I've got my other bucket over here. We'll just give the stick blender a quick clean off. Okay, so into this little bucket here, I'm just going to pour off some of this white which I can then use to top off the soap later so that my piping actually shows up nicely so I'll pop that to one side and we'll go and grab the mold. Okay, so I've got my mold here and I've got my silicon liner in. There's a link down below as to where I actually buy my silicon liners from. This one's a relatively new liner so I'm still trying to get it so that it's not as floppy and does what I want it to do so I've just got a little bulldog clip in there for now. Hopefully once I've used it a few times I won't need that. So we're going to start by pouring in Actually, no, I wasn't going to start with that. I was going to actually pour my pale pink into this white, which is why I sectioned off some of that white for use later. So I'm just going to simply drop swirl that into my white and scrape that bucket out as well because I don't really want any for later. Looks like it's still staying nice and fluid, so fingers crossed it stays that way. And I want every last drop out so I don't have to do too much of the washing up of the pots. So that's in 
on there and now I'm just going to simply pour that into my mould and hopefully by doing it this way I'll get a really nice marble effect through that white with the pale pink. I'm just going to save a bit of that so I can mix the darker pink. So just taking our darker pink here and I'm just going to drop that up and down as well. So we'll come up, round and back down, taking care to try and get it into the corners as well. It's the one thing I do often forget. So I'm just going to swirl it down the mould as well just to try and get a bit of movement in there. And I'm going to scrape the last of this pot out as well. We may actually have to try a different camera angle on the next soap um, so I don't keep blocking your view. Either that or I need to get myself some clear buckets to work from. So that's the last of that dark pink in there which was the raspberry rush and then just to break that up a little bit more I'll finish pouring in this white one that's got that pale pink mixed through as well just scrape that down a bit and I'll pour it from up high just to try and get that bit more movement then finish scraping just this, crack this pot here. I'm going to use my spatula and then just gently pour the soap and let the spatula disperse that soap batter for me. Sorry you probably can't see but as I said next next time I will try a different camera angle so that hopefully you can see more of what I'm doing. I'm not too bothered if it doesn't cover all of the top but I do want a majority of that pink to be covered up so that when I do my layer of piping it'll actually stand out that little bit better so we'll just scrape the rest of this white out here still being careful not to pour it from too high so that it doesn't split and fall below that pink so we'll pop that to one side for a moment and I'll go and get the piping set up and then we'll come back and do the top Okay, so we're back to do the piping and I've got my oils here which have cooled down to about 24 degrees and I've got my lye water as well. I've got everything set up for my piping. Not only am I still using that cherry blossom mica and the raspberry rush, I've also added for my tops some of the mocha mica from my micro obsession and the Caribbean mica as well. This Caribbean mica will go a funny colour when it first hits that soap batter but it does um, dry into a really nice bright vibrant green and I've mixed all those colors with just a little bit of oil I'm working what with what will potentially end up to be about a 300 gram batch of um, soap so to make sure that those colors disperse in those smaller amounts I always mix with that oil and I've got all my little um, cups set up here with my piping bags and piping tips so we'll get started emulsify it didn't need much of a blend because it is such a small amount of oil and lye there I'm actually going to measure this off into the cups for the color off camera because I'm actually using quite small amounts and I do want to weigh it out this time so I'll be back in just one moment okay so we're back adding the colors into our soap batter and as you can see some of these have got very small amounts now i've also not added in any fragrance oil to these because um, i do want that plenty of working time for each of these so i'm just going to give them a really good stir to make sure that color is incorporated all the way through Okay. 
Okay, so they're all mixed in. Now it is still a little bit fluid at the moment, but I wanted it to be fluid enough for me to mix those colours in. So what I'm going to do is just leave this for a little bit to set and then we'll come back and we'll start piping. Okay, so we're back to do the piping work. I've got all my colours um, into the piping bags and I've got a mix of Wilton tips and just other tips that I've had from various places. And yesterday while we are in um, an Australian store called The Good Guys that generally deal with a lot, a lot of electronics, I noticed that they've started to bring in a lot of Lakeland products and I found this piping set here. There was a couple of piping bags, the cleaning brush which is what I really wanted. So I bought that set and that's what I have um, in this um, particular piping bag so this is just one of the a round tip and I'm going to use this just to roughly pipe um, some branches that I'm then going to put the cherry blossoms on now I've not had any piping experience whatsoever I can cook and I do like to cook but I've never done um, bakery with things like cupcakes and and that sort of thing so a lot of my piping skills are what I've learnt on places like um, YouTube and going through Pinterest and Google so we'll see what it turns out to be like so please don't judge me on my piping. <laughs> so now I'm just going to try and lay some of this brown to try and make it look like the branches from off the cherry blossom tree. Now I'm purposely going in squiggly lines and squeezing at different um, sort of rates because quite often when you look at the cherry blossom trees the branches are quite knobbly and got lots of bumps and gnarls and and that sort of thing so I'm just trying to get something that may resemble a cherry blossom so we'll keep going with that and then I'm going to see if I can pipe something that may look like cherry blossom flowers this will be the first time I've actually tried to pipe anything that looks like flowers usually I pipe the nice high tops and then add soap gumballs or other sorts of embellishments I have done flower tops before but generally just using the open star tips and, and those sort of piping tips never have I actually tried to use one of the purpose-made petal tips so that's something new for me to learn today so we'll keep on going and I'll be back in a moment so now we've got the pinks up where I've got the thicker end of this tip which is the Wilton 127 I've got my dark pink and then I've got all the light pink as well and we're going to try and achieve a two-tone petal but as I said before I've not done this style of piping before so we'll see how we go I've got my um, my soap mold on a lazy Susan so I can easily turn it around to so I can get some nice shaped petals so let's give this a go oh and it's not coming out too bad given that I've not done this before hopefully that darker pink will start to show through soon and I'm actually just gonna fill this soap mold up with these big petals so I'll probably fast forward you through this bit until I get to the the next section
Okay, so I think I am actually going to stop there. Um, I think I have a lot of learning to do with that particular piping tip, but once it's all cut up, you probably won't actually be able to tell. With this um, darker pink, I've got another one of those Lake, Lake Lend dyes in here, which is a number 13, and I'm just going to pipe a little bit extra of that dark pink in the centre of the flowers. When you look at the Japanese cherry blossoms, they're usually a light pink on the outside and then have that dark pink centre. So I'm just going to pop a couple of them in the middle of each one. And this tip that um, from the Lakeland set is almost like a mini star tip. So it's given a really fine pretty little center. And I'm pretty tempted because usually when you look at the um, the cherry blossoms you do also see little buds that haven't yet come out so I'm a bit tempted just to add some of that to the white batter but we'll see once I've added some leaves. These ones that I did on the side I was just trying to make it look like there were some flowers coming in from off the side of the mold, just giving it a bit more continuation. And then usually when the, the cherry blossoms are in flower, they do drop all their leaves, but you do occasionally see the odd leaf on them. So I'm just gonna pipe in just a couple of leaves. Now this one does look like a bit of a pale yellow, a pale green at the moment, but by tomorrow, once this is completely set, it will come up as a nice, bright, vibrant green. So I'm just randomly pacing a few petals here and there. Like I said, they don't usually have the tree, the leaves when they're in flower, but I just thought it needed that little bit of a lift. so I think I'm going to stop there I think I'm missing just a little bit up in this corner that bar of soap is going to look pretty bland when it's cut so we'll just add a little bit more of a petal in there and I might just do it in just in the corner only so it looks like it's coming out the corner of the mold like that and we'll just add a couple of the little dots for the, the centre and may just add a leaf just showing from underneath it like so now seeing the Japanese cherry blossoms is something that I would love to go and see I always think they're a little bit magical when you see them in the pictures so I'm going to give it a quick spritz with some glitter and then I will grab my rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to give it a quick spritz over just to make sure that soda ash is kept at bay. Okay, so there we have it. Japanese cherry blossom. I'll take you in for a better close-up in just a minute. Okay, so here's the up close of Japanese cherry blossom. This will sit for about 24 hours before I come back and cut it. And I'll bring you back for that. Okay, so we're back to cut the Japanese cherry blossom soap. So we'll get this lined up onto the multi-bar cutter and see what we've got inside. Okay, so that's lined up. Let's go. So that's what we've got inside. Now hopefully over the next sort of couple of hours as that starts to um, cure a bit, we'll start to see some of that lighter pink that was mixed in. You can start to see it on this bar a 
across the bottom here you can see that pink that was swirled in but I'm really happy with how that darker pink has also swirled through the soap so we'll get the rest of that cut I'll trim it up in a couple of days time and then pop it onto the curing rack for about four to six weeks um, we've still got quite hot humid weather at the moment so I'm thinking about that five week mark before these ones will be ready and they'll be found online as well at, as at the Cleveland markets. But thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.